Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about observer design pattern and it is also one of the design pattern from gang of four design patterns. The observer design pattern is a behavioral design pattern. The main intent of this pattern is to define one to many dependency between objects so that when one object changes its state, all the objects dependent on it are notified automatically. Now in a very simple word, what it means is that creating notification relationship between a object and other objects who are interested in knowing the state change of a particular object. And this is something that you might have used a lot of time because the observer pattern is supported out of box by .NET since the inception. And if you have ever worked on user interface applications, this is something you would have definitely used. So first let's start with an example. And I'm going to show a couple of implementation of observer pattern for .NET. One of the implementation which is based on the age old available features of .NET and another implementation which was introduced a little bit later in the development cycle. So having said that, our observer pattern has two main candidates. One is a subject which is the main object whose state change is what we are interested in. And then we have observer. An observer can be single or multiple observers who are interested in state change of the subject. And then the state object itself and I have declared a user object which is our state for this example. So let's start with the subject first. So if we use the traditional implementation, the easiest way to implement an observer pattern is through an event and delegate. Basically, the subject defines an event which can be subscribed by the observer. And whenever the subject state changes, the subject will raise the event and observers will get a call back. So that is the implementation we are going to do first. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to create first a user. So we declare a user and then we are going to define an event. So the event is going to be public and the event will have an action delegate which will give the user and the name of the event can be user changed. And then we are going to have a constructor for the class and the constructor of the class will take the name of the user and the age and here we can create the user during construction. So we'll set the name and the age of the user during construction. And then finally, we can have a method which is used for updating the user state. And here, let's say we're just going to change the age of the user. So we can create a public void. update user age and can take int g and here we can say user dot age is equal to age and then if if you just change this not equal to null then we can raise the event user changed and we can pass the user object to the delegate. So this is the subject who is the initiator of the change in state. And then we can have an observer class here. And for the observer, we can have a very simple implementation. We can have a constructor for the observer. And in the constructor, we can take the subject as dependency. And let me create an interface for the subject. I'll keep the interface in the same class. So I subject, so we can have I subject as a dependency. And here, all we are going to do is we're going to say subject dot user changed. And then we can just create a method here. And here in the method, we can just have plain and simple console dot write line. We can say name.
So we can just print the name and age of the user. As simple as that. And I'm not going to create any interface for the observer because it is not needed for this example. So this is the implementation. And now what we can do is we can go into the program class and here we can create var subject equal to new subject. We have to add the namespace. So, and for the subject, pass the name as Bob and age as 20. And then what we can do is we can create an observer. So we can var observer equal to new observer. And here we can provide the subject as a dependency. And then what we can do is we can do subject dot update age. And here we can pass the age as 25. And then we can just do console dot read line so that the application does not exit out because the observer is going to get a call back and it's going to print out the name. So this is the plain and simple implementation of observer pattern using an event and delegate. So let me run this program. And once we run this program, we can see the name of Bob and age 25 is printed out. So we have this. Now let's change the implementation of subject and the observer. So now what we are going to do is instead of using event and delegate, we're going to use the interfaces which comes with .NET, iObservable, and iObserver. So for that, we don't need the subject anymore, but I will just keep the interface and we can get rid of this user event. We don't need this. And here, what we can do is we can use iObservable of user. That's one thing. And then we'll implement the interface. So implementation of interface, it just implements a method called subscribe where the observer is given. And here what we can do is we can create a local variable observer. I know by default everything is private, but I have this habit of putting a private keyword in front of every variable. If someone is wondering why I use private every time, it's just a habit. And then here in the subscribe, what we can do is we can say this dot observer is equal to observer. And then we have to return an ID disposable. So I'm going to just return this. And here I'm going to implement I disposable. Now I disposable can be the whole implementation of dispose can be given out to someone else. But for the time being, I'm just going to keep the dispose method in the same class, just for simplicity. Now, the other thing I wanted to do is, if we go into this old implementation, we can create multiple observers and we can inject the subject and all of them can listen. Whereas in this implementation, we don't have an event. And also here, as you can see, the implementation has reversed now. Earlier, the observer was depending on the subject. So subject was injected to the observer. In this implementation, the observer is injected to the subject. So the subject calls the observer and let them know when a change happens. So due to that, what we can do is we can create this I observer of array instead of a single one, I can create an I list of that and name it as observers. And I can declare it as a new list of I observer of user. And here what I can do is I can do this dot observers dot add and I can add the observer to the existing collection. And before I return, I can just call observer has an on next. So I'm just going to call the on next passing the user object. And here on change, the implementation is going to change. And here we're going to say for each var observer in observers, and we can do observer dot on next. So this, so this method will essentially loop through the collection of observer that we have and call on next on all the method. On next is the implementation of iObserver, 
which is the callback method. So on next will get callback every time the user is updated in this particular subject. And on dispose, we can just say, we can do observers dot clear, which will clear out all the registrations or all the observers which are observing the subject. So that can be a simple implementation of the dispose. So our subject is ready. It has implemented I observable and it is in the subscribe. It is getting the I observer, adding it to the collection and then calling on next on change. Now we will go back to the observer and here we're going to get rid of this implementation. And instead we are going to say I observer and we're going to have I observer of user. And now we'll implement the implement the interface. And here it's going to do for on complete given we are not raising this event. I'm just completed because it's not that important for us. Similarly, on error, I'm just going to say error. But this method can be used. We can communicate completed and error event through the I observer, and which can be handled by this observer, but for our use case, it is not needed. And here we can say name is value dot name and age is value dot age. So it's similar implementation. The only difference here is I'm calling on next on subscribe. So the on next will be called on subscribe first time and then every time the user object changes. Now we'll go to the program and a couple of things will change in program. First of all, observer is not going to take any subject. And secondly, we have to have subject.subscribe to the observer because the observer has to be subscribed to the subject. And then we can say changed 25 and read line. So here what's going to happen is Bob is going to be printed out twice. First time when we subscribe, Second time when we change the age. First time the age will be 20, second time the age will be 25. So if we run this application, we can see the response is coming as expected. So these are the two very simple implementation of observer design pattern. Apart from that, we can of course use the out of box reactive extensions, which internally uses the observer design pattern. And I already covered reactive extensions in one of my previous videos, so you can check it out. But this is in a nutshell what observer design pattern is and how to implement it in .NET. And for this example, I'm using .NET 6, but it's going to be same for .NET 6 or .NET 5 or any version of .NET Core. So that's all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.